Do the eyes on your fishing lures actually help you catch more bass? Or are they just painted on to sell baits? And what about those black fake eye spots near the tail? Are they making your bait look more realistic? Or causing you to miss fish? Three recent studies show how you can trigger more bites and hook more of the fish that strike. You know the old joke in fishing is that lures are made to catch fishermen, not fish. And especially when it comes to eyes and these paint jobs, I've always wondered over the years, what about the eyes? You see big ones, small ones, bright ones, reflective ones, and then some realistic paint jobs. You know, they look just like Shad and they have these little false eyes on them. And I've always wondered, does that help? Does it hurt? Do some people swear by them, some people don't. Well, I dove into the research and sure enough, it paints a really clear picture with some recent studies. I'll go into three of them. It gives you a pretty clear idea of how you can help get more bites and how you can also hurt getting bites and missing fish. So let me dive into it. I think it has some pretty definitive answers for us. I'll quickly run through each of the three studies. Each one has a little bit different conclusions that we can build on. And then after that, we'll talk about exactly do eyes help? And if so, where do you want to place them? And how big? Now, all three of these studies were peer reviewed. And the first one was done in Sweden by a team of researchers there. It was published in 2024 in the journal Functional Ecology. And basically, they looked at perch, yellow perch, in 14 different lakes across Sweden and wanted to see how much the eye size varied from one lake to the next. So if you've ever fished in northern lakes in the U.S., we have a lot of perch, yellow perch there, and they're both a predator and then they're also prey for over in Europe, like Sweden, pike eat them, but here smallmouth bass love to eat them. But basically they studied these 14 different lakes and looked at the eye size of these perch. Now they noticed that in lakes that were clearer, the clearer it was, the smaller that the eye size was. And then secondly, when they were more open water feeders, their eye size got bigger. And then if lakes had a lot of predators, say like the pike, in that case, their eyes tended to be smaller. Obviously the fact that having a big eye was helping predators move in and eat them. So that tells you, tips you off right there that predators are spotting prey by their eyes. And keep in mind in this study, the individual fish, the perch weren't changing their eye size, but as a whole population from lake to lake, the eye sizes were different and basically they were adapted or evolving to have bigger or smaller eyes depending on what was an advantage for them to be able to eat themselves versus what was a disadvantage being eaten by the predator fish. Now the second study looked at something a little bit different and that's the false eye spots. You ever notice a shad and a lot of prey, uh, they have a dark spot that's a fake eye. This was published in 2013 by researchers in Finland and published in the Proceedings of the Royal Sciences. Now what they looked at in this study are these false eye spots. They wanted to know if the false eye spots, if that helped divert uh, the predators so they were striking in the wrong spot, or if it was big enough and made it look like they have a great big eye and might intimidate the predator and keep them away because they think the prey's too big. Now, even though this wasn't done with bass, it gives you an idea of predator versus prey, what's working and why they use this technique. Because obviously you're seeing these dots on shad and stuff. So obviously it must be coming into play into the bass world. But this was done with three spined sticklebacks a fish that I've never fished for, but anyway, they used those as the predator and then they used artificial prey and they used different sizes of eye, fake eye dots. They used ones that were smaller than what the predator fish was. They used great big ones that were larger than the predator's eyes to see if that would intimidate them. And then they also used none on there and then saw how quickly and how effectively they preyed on all those. Now, the first thing they noted is they put a fake eye dot on one side of the prey and not on the other side. And sure enough, the predator fish, the sticklebacks, they went more times than not, they went towards that fake eye. Basically that fake eye was drawing them towards it. They were attacking towards the eye. Now, a couple other things they noted, they didn't strike any faster when there was the eye dot versus prey that had none. It's not like they could spot the eye and then, oh, that's how I see you. They went ahead and they went towards it at the same speed. And then also the size of it didn't matter. The small one, the medium, large, they all hit about the same rate. So having a great big one there, it didn't intimidate the predators. Basically, they were looking for that eye. They wanted to strike towards the eye. They were headshotting it. So the big piece of the puzzle that this study answered, at least in this situation, was it a diversion trying to get predators to strike in the wrong spot? 
or was it intimidation? And it was diversion. Big ones didn't scare away predators. It just effectively changed where they struck. So it's more of a diversion technique. Having a big eye, a big fake eye, is not going to scare them away. It's just going to change where they try to strike the prey. Now the third one, I think this is the most fascinating, and this really gives some definitive answers. This was actually published in 2013 in the journal Nature, and it was done by Australian scientists. And they took damselfish, which they subjected them either to predators in lab tanks or no predators, and a control group and basically checked to see over this period if their eye size got bigger or smaller, plus their fake eyes, if they grew those and if those got larger and smaller. And then once they turn them into the wild, what happened to these fish? Now the damselfish are prey fish, so they'd be like a bluegill or something. And these ones, they subjected them in a lab for six weeks and they put chemical and visual cues. They made it, basically made the water smell and look like there were a lot of predators around for some of them. And then other ones, they put fish that were herbivores that don't eat fish, they eat grass around them. And then in a third control group, they had no other fish around them. And basically they observed over the six week period what happened to these prey fish, these damselfish, and how they adapted. Now these damselfish, they actually, over a six week period, the ones that were around predators actually grew larger false eye spots, the fake ones. And then also their own actual eyes, their own eye size, they didn't grow to be as large versus the ones that are around herbivores or no other fish. They grew larger eyes and had smaller fake eye spots. Now pretty much what you'd expect too from any prey fish, the more predators around, they moved slower and they stayed tighter to cover. So all these cues, you know, that the, the perch and, and all these different species, again, even though they're not bluegill and bass, stuff like that, they sound a lot like the fish that we fish for. They act pretty similarly and they're all using the same defense mechanisms and then they turn these fish loose in the wild and guess what happened? So once they turn these fish into the wild, the ones that were around the predators the whole time that had smaller eyes and grew larger fake eye spots, 72 hours in the wild and natural settings, only 10% of those got eaten. But the control group that weren't around the predators that grew regular sized eyes and didn't have the big fake eye spots, guess what happened to them? 60% of those got eaten. So a huge difference in actual reality when they're around predators, obviously smaller eyes and bigger fake eye spots, it works for defense mechanisms. So across those three studies, to me, it becomes pretty clear in that predator versus prey relationship of how eyes and eye spots are working. The first being that predators pretty consistently go at the eyes. It makes sense. They're going for a headshot. We always see that with bass. And it also gives an indication of which way the bait's gonna move. Now, if I'm a prey, I don't want him knowing where my head is. One, my eye's probably gonna be smaller, so he's less apt to see it. But if I have a fake eye spot on there, you know, this one, they have it painted towards the top. A lot of shad and stuff, it's more in the midsection. You get two different things. One, instead of going for the head of the bait, they're gonna go for the tail, so they're more apt to miss it. The second thing is if this, the farther back, that fake eye spot is on the body, then a bass is coming up. And if I think this is the head instead of this, well, then I'm expecting it's gonna move this way. So when I come in to strike it and I'm thinking it's gonna go this way, well, the head's actually over here and I just missed it. So having a false eye spot that makes you strike in the wrong part of it and also think you're moving the different direction, that's an effective technique to elude capture. And then the last thing that popped up a couple times was the actual size of the eyes. When they're around predators, especially in clear water and stuff, the eyes of bait fish, prey fish are getting smaller. They're, they're fairly small to avoid predators trying to see them and headshot them. So, you know, if you're trying to get the most realistic lure on really clear water, probably smaller eyes would be better than having great big ones. So as bass fishermen, I think the implications are pretty clear. Having eyes on the front, I don't think it's gonna hurt you. Obviously the intimidation didn't seem to come in unless it's, like I said, really pressured waters and it kind of looks unrealistic. But I think in most cases, having the eyes near the head of the bait, that's gonna help the, bite, the bass zero in and strike your bait in the correct spot. Now the flip side of that are the false eyes. Now this one's up towards the top and it's closer to the hook, 
probably a good idea. Baits that have those false eye dots, like way back in, you're probably working, you're giving the bait a defense mechanism. I'd be scratching that thing off, painting over it, something. I don't think you want those false eye dots in the back because these studies show pretty quickly that's like one of the number one defense mechanisms of prey fish. That, that fish is more apt to strike and think the baits go in the wrong direction or actually miss the hooks. So putting a false eye dot or having it on your bait anywhere but at the head, probably a bad idea. So a couple other big takeaways to me on this. One, these nice, you know, reflective eyes and stuff, they probably catch some light, help uh, prey fish or predator fish like bass find them a little better and zone in where they should hit. But they're also going for those just false eye dots. I'm thinking if you just take a Sharpie and put them they might not be quite as good as the reflective eyes, but if one of these fall off your bait or your bait comes without eye dots, just taking a Sharpie and placing them near the head probably helps the bass be more reliable to strike where you want them to strike it. And probably they're almost as effective as those high dollar, you know, the more shiny and, and high end type of eyes. Just a couple black spots with a Sharpie probably work almost as well. And then finally, I think this is probably to me the biggest takeaway. I've not tried this yet, but I'm definitely going to try it. You know, most of the baits, they're they're moving towards the head. So that where the eyes are, you know, it's, it's pretty clear they're moving in that direction. What about Nico rigs and wacky rigs? This is my old trusty wacky general uh, rig right here. And, you know, this thing's moving the hook's in the middle. I don't want them going towards one end or the other. And what happens so often on Nico rigs and especially wacky rigs, I mean, they always get the tail and the fish has it and he's swimming off and you set the hook and they don't get it. Same with like ribbon tailed worms and stuff like big Texas rigs. A lot of times they're not getting it. You can simply take a Sharpie and you can just draw and, and we've seen in the research, you don't have to have a real complex one or fancy one, but I'm just holding the Sharpie against the bait here a second and you can see I just made a black dot. Why not put an eye dot right next to the hook in the middle? Try to draw that strike right in the middle. Same thing with the Texas rig. You know, you're they're striking the tail and like craws and stuff when you're Texas rigging those. Why not draw an eye dot that's pretty close to where your hook is? Where you're going to draw them in towards it. And the action of this is actually going to be, especially on a Wacky and Nico, it's going to be right around the hook. I think it makes a ton of sense to put that black dot right there where the hook is instead of tail grabbing it, maybe they actually get the hook. You know, there's a lot of gimmicks in fishing lures. This one, the science pretty clearly points in one direction. If you want more science breakdowns, check out the rest of my science playlist. Help you bring some science into your fishing.